Let's close our eyes for prayer. Our Father, we thank you for what we have learned already. Thank you for bringing us together. Thank you for this privilege of always gathering at the feet of Jesus so that we can get the best from you and so we can give the best to people that you make us to minister to. Speak to our hearts tonight. Help us to understand how to pass across the message of salvation to other people. In Jesus' name, we pray. We've been going through the book of Jonah. And you would have noticed in the approach we are taking that we are not just hurrying through just to make sure we give the interpretation of the verses of the various chapters. We want to make it as practical as possible and yet still keep to the text. Actually, whenever you pick any text of scripture, you bring the truth out of that text, you apply it to the people so that it can become eventually a turning point in their lives and the lord can use what you say to be a blessing to them i'm now in chapter three i was still looking at verses two three and four chapter three of jonah verses two three and four arise go on to nineveh that great city and preach unto it the preaching that i bid thee so jonah arose and he went unto nineveh according to the word of the lord now nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days journey and jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet forty days and nineveh shall be overthrown tonight we're looking at the content of the evangelistic message the content of an evangelistic message in the case of jonah he preached a prophetic message of warning and judgment to Nineveh. And that was a message that was given. The message was commanded to preach. And as you read the rest of chapter 3, you'll find that the whole city repented. They all turned unto the Lord. But there are two things that uh, give us, uh, that give the reason why that happened. In verse 2, preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. If we can find out from the pages of the New Testament the preaching that we are being bidding to preach to the world of today, then we'll find the same result will follow. In verse 3, the second reason, Jonah arose and he went unto Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. If we can go, if we can preach, if we can do everything in our evangelistic outreach according to the word of the Lord, then we'll see the same result that Jonah saw. In delivering an evangelistic message, please note, there are three parties and there are three parts that you need to understand. Number one, God, the source of the evangelistic message. Number two, the receiver, that is the lost, the sinners, the target of the evangelistic message. Number three, the person himself who is preaching the gospel, the soul winner, or the evangelist, the channel through whom the message is sent. And there are three things that are important. Love, faith, hope. You have faith in God. He has sent you out. And you know that he has control, authority over the hearts of men. So as you are going and you are preaching, you have faith in God. Number two, you have love towards the audience. And that love will show in your tenderness. It will show in your tone. It will show in the approach, in the manner in which you are giving the message. Number three, there is hope. Hope of a positive response. You are not thinking that they are beyond conversion. But in the case of Jonah, he didn't have all this, and yet God overruled. If we go in the attitude of Jonah, unto the lost, unto the sinners, let's understand that mistrust and unbelief can affect the message and our ministration. There are three things we are going to look at. Number one, the simplicity of the evangelistic message. The simplicity of the evangelistic message. Number two, salvation through the evangelistic message. Salvation through the evangelistic message. Number three, the summary of the evangelistic message. Number one, the simplicity of the evangelistic message. Arise in verse two. Go unto Nineveh, that great city, preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. And from there we we'll see that God had something in mind. 
he knew the hearts of the people he knew the string that will be touched that will vibrate and make the people want to turn to the lord and he loves the people and as we look at the world today the bible assures us for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life and therefore the message must be simple enough in the vocabulary of the people that they can understand so that they will come unto the lord as we look at the new testament you're asking yourself what's the content of the evangelistic message how should we preach to the sinners the new testament gives a plain and clear answer in first corinthians chapter one first corinthians chapter one reading there in verses 23 and 24 for we preach christ crucified unto the jews a stumbling block unto the greeks foolishness but unto them which are called but both jews and greeks christ is the power of god and the wisdom of god it tells us that uh, the, the whole message we are preaching to the sinners is very simple we're preaching christ unto them and we're preaching that part of the mission of the ministry of the message of christ that relates to their sin that relates to the removal of their sin that relates to the very fact that jesus christ is the savior the gospel is god's saving plan and it revolves around the sacrifice of the savior jesus christ the incarnate crucified risen reigning returning lord everything centers around jesus christ and paul the apostle said if you want to know the gospel this is a gospel we preach christ crucified not just the life he lived he lived a perfect life a righteous life a holy life but that's not enough he died so that we can be saved isn't that why he said in romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus and thou shalt believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved is it as simple when we preach the gospel that they should understand about christ because everything in preaching the gospel revolves around christ that he died that he was buried that he was raised from the dead that if they believe that and that it was done for them they shall be saved for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation in ephesians chapter 2 reading from verse 1 it says and you as he quickened who are dead in trespasses and sins how did you do that you'll see that from verse 4 it tells us in verse 2 wherein in time past he walked according to the cause of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that now walketh in the children of disobedience it was a painting the picture they needed to understand who they were how they were the kind of life they were living and yet they needed to know the solution to the problem it says among whom also we all had our conversation that's our conduct character manner of life in times past in the laws of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature and uh, and children of wrath are even as others but please understand those three verses they describe the lives of the people the sins of the people but that's not the full gospel you see many people when they go out to preach and they are preaching the evangelistic message they spend the whole time painting the picture of the fall of man the fault of man and the evil the iniquity that man has done we need to do that but just knowing that doesn't mean that the person has understood the means and the way and the source and the avenue of salvation but look at verse 4 but god until you bring the solution to their sin and you show them the way of salvation we have not really preached the gospel but god who is rich in mercy and for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins he has quickened us together with christ by grace are you saved until we mention the love of god the mercy of god and the grace of god we have not really presented the total gospel and he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places where christ jesus in verse 8 for by grace are you saved we can describe their sins we can paint their sins we can show them how bad and rotten they are that doesn't save them they can even become sorry they can mourn for their sin they can shed tears that doesn't save them we must show them the grace of god for by grace are you 
received through faith that not of yourselves it is a gift of god not of works lest any man should boast and we're not just telling them to turn over a new leaf and to do some good works and to live a better life and to change their lives they cannot do that by themselves it is not by works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works which god has before ordained that we shall walk in them it is when they understand that the entrance of the grace of god brings a change and brings a transformation and then by faith they go to god and they are able to hold on to the lord jesus christ who is their substitute their sin bearer and their savior that's when we presented the gospel unto them jesus christ paid the whole penalty of sin for everyone he was our sin bearer on the cross the bible says all have sinned but then grace is available to all also we were lost in the guilt and the shame of sin now each sinner can come and call on the lord when he repents and believes on the lord jesus christ proper response to that message of the gospel will bring forgiveness and salvation that leads me to point number two salvation through the evangelistic message and the goal of preaching is to see the people coming to the lord the goal of preaching is to see them turning away from sin and turning to the savior turning away from their darkness and turning to the light of the world turning away from their helplessness and turning to christ the hope of our redemption or the hope of this world look at uh, jonah chapter 3 and in verse 10 and god saw their works that they turned from their evil way and god repented he relented he changed his mind of the evil that he had said he would do unto them and he did it not that means they went from condemnation unto life there is no condemnation now for those of us who are now in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but walk after the spirit why because we are justified by faith we have peace with god now they repented of their sins and the lord said the judgment he wanted to bring upon them he will not bring the judgment again when we accept christ's atoning uh, atonement and suffering for us we are forgiven we are accepted we are justified we are adopted into the family of god and our sins are forgiven we have peace with god christ comes to live in our hearts changing us inwardly by his very presence and power he gives us grace to live in newness of life it's always like that when we faithfully present christ the way of salvation the only way the only door and the bread of life when we give to the people then they're able to believe and have life eternal and let's just look at one or two examples in the new testament acts chapter 8 acts chapter 8 verse 5 in verse 5 it says that philip went down to the city of samaria he preached christ unto them not just preaching about their sin not just saying they are rotting they are bad yes all have seen we must point to them the hope they have in god and we must point to them christ is the answer he preached christ unto them what the result salvation through the evangelistic message in verse 12 it says in verse 12 but when they believed philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of god and the name of jesus christ they were baptized both men and women they were saved because it says whosoever believeth and is baptized shall be saved then in that same chapter 8 verse 35 then philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him jesus please understand in the new testament we're told of the ministry of the evangelist and philip is mentioned particularly as philip the evangelist in acts chapter 21 and here is what philip did what does the evangelist do the evangelist preaches christ in verse 5 he preaches jesus no matter the text no matter where he's choosing his passage from he approaches it from the angle as jesus being the solution to the problem of sin and then we we're told and as they went on their way they came onto a certain water and the eunuch said see here is water what does hinder me to be baptized and philip 
believe, said if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You see, it's not the crying, it's not uh, you know uh, the, the remorse and everything he showed. He must end up with Christ. He must believe in Christ. He must know that Christ is the answer. He must know that Christ is the very Son of God that has come to make a final sacrifice for our sins. And he commanded him, but such age, the chariot to stand still. And they went down both into the water, and Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they were come up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord caught away Philip, the work had been done. And the eunuch saw him no more, and uh, he went on his way, rejoicing the joy of salvation. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 17, Acts chapter 17, salvation comes through preaching of the evangelistic message evangelistic message in Acts chapter 17 from verse 1. Now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonium, they came unto Thessalonica, where there was a synagogue of the Jews. And Paul, as his manner was, went in unto them, and three Sabbath days reasoned with them out of the scriptures, opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered and risen again from the dead, and that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. That's the gospel. That's the evangelistic message. He went into the Old Testament, opening and alleging and proving to them that this Christ, he came, he died, he rose again. He is our Savior. In verse 4, and some of them believed. That's it. They were saved. See the evidence in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, reading there in verse 5 and in verse 9. In verse 5, it says, For our gospel came not unto you, in what only, but also in power, and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sake. Verse 9, for they themselves show of us what manner of entering in we add unto you how that ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. The message was very simple. It's centered on Christ. And so when we're preaching the evangelistic message, make sure that everything centers on the Lord Jesus Christ. He came, he was born of Virgin Mary. He lived a sinless life. And he's the one that God has approved. That will be the savior of the world. And with his life and everything that we see, we know that the approval is there. The divine evidence that this is the Christ, the savior of the world. And then as we present it with the right attitude. And you present it with faith. And you believe that they are going to have a positive response. They give their lives to the Lord. And then the evidence they have given their lives to the Lord. There's a change. There's a transformation. They come into Christ and the Bible says if any man be in Christ it's a new creature. All things have passed away and behold all things have become new. Let me now summarize what we've been talking about. Point number three. The summary of the evangelistic message. Very important. The summary of the evangelistic message. Let's come back to Jonah chapter 3 verse 4. Jonah chapter 3 verse 4. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey and he cried and said yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown at that time and in the new testament times and even till today there are many things associated with the preaching of the gospel well please understand the very climax the hammer that drives the nail in for the people to understand the way of salvation and for them to be saved is the preaching of the gospel. Many, many things may come before the preaching of that gospel. Many, many things may happen before the preaching of that gospel. The preambles, the things we have to do in the meetings. But please understand, all those preambles, they are heading to that climax and they are heading to the point where the sinner will see the picture painted very clearly and he will see Christ on the cross and he will say yes he did that for me I accepted that it's for me and then they put their faith in Christ and they become saved anything 
in the whole process that disturbs that climax in evangelistic message whether it is one on one or whether it is one person preaching to a small group of people or an evangelist talking to a large crowd of people everything must lead on to that climax of presenting the gospel to the people that's why it's very important that as we have been majoring on evangelism during uh, this period these uh, past weeks on us in our Thursday meetings and also here in our workers uh, leadership meeting we should understand this is very important this is the reason why Jesus Christ died and in his own case he preached judgment unto them because that's what the Lord uh, gave him to preach unto them we learn something from that it doesn't actually matter the text it doesn't matter uh, the, the, the things to say if those are the things the Lord wanted you to say in presenting the gospel to those people the Spirit of God can use that he can use uh, you know uh, the, the, the preaching from the stories of the Old Testament and uh, walk it out in the hearts of the people make lead them to the Lord lead them to salvation he can use uh, the, the message on eschatology on a uh, prophecy on the coming judgment on the rapture anything whatever and you see to lead them to salvation in the case of uh, this uh, man Jonah he used that message of the judgment and he led them to repentance but please understand we're looking at the summary now of the evangelistic message the summary in uh, first Corinthians chapter 15 verse 4 first Corinthians chapter 15 let me read from verse 1 moreover brethren I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you that's the evangelistic message which also ye have received and where ye stand by which also ye are saved by which ye are saved that is it is through the preaching of that gospel that they are now saved what's the nudge what's the conclusion what's the summary of the message you preach unto them in verse 3 for i delivered unto you first of all that which i also received out that christ died for our sins that's the gospel he died not just that he died other people have died before him other people have died even after him but he died for the purpose of saving us from our sins bearing our guilt carrying our punishment carrying our condemnation he died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again again the third day according to the scriptures in romans chapter 1 romans chapter 1 verses 15 and 16 romans 1 15 and 16 so as much as in me is i am ready to preach the gospel unto you that i roam also for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is a power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the jew force and also to the greek we're preaching christ to them and then we make sure that we lead them to that point of believing we describe what it means to believe and we help them to be able to hold on to the lord with real faith saving faith so that they can believe second corinthians chapter 4 second corinthians chapter 4 i'm reading the first part of verse 5 for we preached not ourselves but christ jesus the lord we preached not ourselves but christ jesus the lord from that verse i want you to see the uh, the construction there it says we preach not this but this not this but this from that construction i want to bring uh, to you the summary of the evangelistic message always understand when you are preaching the gospel not this but this what does that mean not acceptance of christianity as religion but the atonement of christ for sinners and you know there are people that go out and they compare religions it's like uh, you know they are preaching a religious a subject a lecture on comparative religion and they're introducing people to the acceptance of christianity as religion that's not the gospel the atonement of christ for sinners not baptism as a means of salvation but the new birth through 
repentance and faith in Christ. We're not going out there talking about baptism as a means of salvation. We're preaching the new birth. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Not conformity to Christian conduct, but conversion to Christ by Christ. You see, there are people that go out and all they are preaching is see how a Christian ought to dress, see how a Christian ought to live, see how a Christian ought to do this. How a Christian, and they are talking to them about conformity to Christian conduct. That will come after when we're preaching the gospel, we're preaching conversion to Christ by the power of Christ not the denominations in christendom but the death of christ for our salvation there are people that go out all they are talking about is our denomination our church our this our that that will not save we are not preaching denominations in christendom we're preaching the death of christ didn't you hear when i read it unto you the gospel which i received what gospel is that that jesus christ died for our sins and that he rose again didn't you here in Romans chapter 10 verses 9 and 10 that if you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died and that he rose again because with the heart man believeth and with the mouth he makes a confession unto righteousness then you will be saved then it is not experience but the evangel evangel means the gospel it is not experience you know Jonah didn't tell his experience when he got to Nineveh and it's not you know telling the how I got saved you know what I was before I was this before I not your experience it is not explained but the evangel the knowledge the summary the content of the gospel that you are preaching unto them not the fault and the fall and the failure of man you, not just that if you stay with the fall of man if you stay with the fault of man see what man has done see how dirty man is see how sinful man is that doesn't that's not the end of the gospel the end is when you come to talk of faith in christ believe because to them that believed on him that received him he gave them power to become the sons of god even the people that believed on his name believe and thou shalt be saved not good works the good works of man you know if you do this and give money to the beggars and do this and do that then you'll be said no not good works but the gospel of grace the gospel of grace you talk about the grace of god god's righteousness or redemption at christ's expense it's not a, a, a message of two letters do it's a message of four letters done it's done it's not that you try you trust it's not that you attempt you accept he's done it already and therefore you point the sinners unto christ tell them it is not what you can do it's not the activities of your hand because your tears forever flow and your zeal no respite no all these for sin cannot atone thou and thou alone must save therefore you are pointing them to the gospel of grace it's not just happiness in life you know if you come to christ you'll be happy you'll take your sins you'll take your sorrows away he took all my sorrows away i'm joyful i'm happy now that's not the end of the message it's hope in christ that without christ we're helpless and hopeless but the hope that he gave us on the cross is not just a temporary on earth here we're happy but then we have hope in christ and when you come into christ holiness through christ it's not the ideas and the ideologies of men you know there are people that, and they say they are preaching the gospel and all the ideas and ideologies of men they rake from here and there so that uh, uh, they can convince the people that you know if you really want to believe look at this idea look at this ideology is the incarnation of christ that the word became flesh and he dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the father that god became man he put on human flesh so that he can be where we are and then the son of god becoming the son of man a man of sorrows he took our shame and he took our guilt a man of sorrows all our iniquities are laid upon him and it's not just judgment but justification by faith in christ it's not just that we go out like you know jonah he didn't have the complete message and it was it was just to preach that limited thing at that limited time to those limited to so the limited community but now we're to preach the gospel to the whole world and it's not just judgment not only judgment justification by faith in christ and it's not merely knowledge of scripture but knowledge of the savior you know you can go through knowledge of scripture to the sinners and tell them about this and tell them about that 
No, that's not what they need. They just need a selected part that relates to the knowledge of the Savior and the knowledge of our salvation. It's not liberty in carnality, but the Lordship of Christ. When you are bringing them to the Lord, you are not telling them, come to Christ, and then after that, you can smoke all you want, you can drink all you want, you have liberty in carnality. No, it says that you receive him as Savior and lord he must be your lord he must come to control your life and it's not modernity we're preaching we're preaching the messiah as a mediator one mediator between god and man the lord jesus christ and it's not the need of turning over a new leaf change your life uh, you know do this polish the exterior it is a necessity of accepting christ as savior it's not the opinions of men concerning christ some people feel in their opinion christ was a you know great prophet it was this it was that it's not the opinions of christ we go out to debate with them it's the offering of christ once and for all Behold, the lamp of God that gave that uh, uh, takes away the sin of the world. He is the Savior and He is the Redeemer. He is the offering of Christ once and for all. And it's not just prosperity. You know, many times if you listen to the things going around you, you will miss the gospel. And the people you are preaching to, they will not understand what the gospel is anymore. It is not prosperity. It is pardon through Christ and peace with God. What bothers them is not just money. They are, they are sinners who are rich. They are sinners who are, who are prospered. But how can I be pardoned? How can my sins be taken away? How can the guilt I have, how can it be taken away? How can I have peace with God here and the peace of God till I die? And it is not a religion of resolutions. Determination. Resolution. Resolve. You will not do this again. You will not do this again. Make the resolution very strong and determine. And then as you are going, you close your eyes to all those things you are going to see on the street. That's not the gospel. It's not a religion of resolutions. It is righteousness through the redemption in Christ. He did it. It's very simple. He died on the cross. And because he paid for my redemption, I can trust him. And then as sin has reigned, because of the fall now because of the grace of God and righteousness will reign in life and it is not just success in life it's salvation and eternal life we're talking of something higher than success in life higher than the things they have in this life salvation and eternal life and it's not the theology of liberalism we're going out to preach the theology of you know everything is liberal now all religions are the same uh, many roads lead to lead to rome and therefore you know god is so liberal now he doesn't uh, pinpoint his only begotten son as the only measure as the only source as the only way of salvation anymore no not the not the theology of liberalism but the truth of life the truth that brings life that jesus christ is the truth is the way and he is the life it's not uniformity with a church you know you're trying to make them uniform with your church the way they look and the way they appear that's not the gospel if uh, that is necessary the holy spirit will do that later what we're talking about now is union and unity with christ they come into christ i in you and you in me as the father is in me you bring them into that fellowship and relationship and union with Christ and it is that marriage because you, you have been uh, separated from the law that will be married unto another which is Jesus Christ who is raised from the dead and that gives you the power to live in newness of life so it's not uniformity with the church it's unity union with Christ it's not visions and revelations you know uh, with these people that go about and say you know when I got saved the vision I saw the revelations I saw packed that aside we're talking about the victory of Christ and his vicarious suffering for us that is he suffered for us not because he sinned but his vicarious death for us and then the victory we can have in Christ and it's not the words of men we're going out to preach the word of God how does faith come faith coming by hearing hearing by what by the word of God. And it's as we do that, then the grace of God comes into their lives. That faith will be activated and by that faith, they'll be able to have the salvation of the Lord. In Ephesians chapter 2 again, verse 8, For by grace are ye saved through faith. 
not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Well, you go then and tell the people in the world, salvation is a gift. It's not something they work for. It's not something they labor for. Christ has accomplished on the cross of Calvary. They can come now and receive and accept. Let's rise up and pray. Have you been preaching the gospel to the people? Or are you just telling them do's and don'ts? Preach the gospel. Preach the evangelistic message. Tell them about Christ who died for us. As they turn from their sins and they hold on to Christ, they will be saved.